How's it going, everybody? Today is uh, Tuesday, or at least I think it is. Um, we're just pulling the, dragging the tires back and about to cut the plastic off the corn silage pile. And, uh, you know, this morning it fed all the way up to the plastic, and so we're just going to trim it back some. Um, so far, it's worked pretty good on this this rock pad that we had. I mean, we've had some rocks in the, end up on the feed lane, but not too bad. And, um, you know, I've been able to keep it pretty clean, except for this morning I was rushing a little bit. I didn't get it very good. So, uh, yeah, other than that, it's working out pretty good. We got probably, right now we're feeding six pounds of dry matter of corn silage per cow per day. And we still got this much left. That's probably, well, five days. Eh, it'd be about another month to here. At least, at least two months, I would think and uh which that was kind of the plan from the beginning was to to make it to march so we've backed off some on it because of the grazing we are great i mean grass is going nuts right now uh just the last couple days have been 70 degrees i think actually was it monday or sunday was 80 degrees here um so grass has been growing like crazy we just had a cold front blow in this morning and uh I think tomorrow the highest 32 or something like that, or are supposed to be 32 all during the day. With uh, uh, right now they have us in in a cold rain, and then um, uh, Dallas is supposed to get sleet and stuff, and then west of Dallas is supposed to get some snow. So we'll see how that if they end up moving that around any. But uh, so far they've been moving it every day a little bit further east. So. So we'll get this uh, plastic cut. I already moved the tires, which tires are half full of water, which and most of them are semi tires, so it's a little bit heavy. And then we got the big tanker tires. I didn't have to move that one today, but I had to throw some of them back and then drag these back or slide them back and uh, cut the plastic now. All right, while we're up here, I'll go over this real quick. Um, well, the hood's down, but uh, we took the washer fluid bottle off and all the wires connect right up in here underneath the dash. And then, so the people that had this before, the previous owner, uh, they did a lot of just, uh, you know, quick fixes, half assing it type deal. And then so, uh, let's see here. Take this wire, for instance, this is on the trailer where you'd plug your trailer lights in, which is broke anyway, and then they peeled off the uh, insulation or you know just the outside shell of the, the wire housing. <coughs> but right here on this red wire, it's got bare spots in it. And then uh, it's got all these different connections here. And then it goes to a small wire, which is sliced, or sliced, spliced there. And then, uh, I can't remember where that wire goes. And then like this white wire here has, uh, oh, there it is, a bare spot there. And then this blue wire was cut, or maybe we cut it, I can't remember. No, this one was cut. Oh, I know what they did. So. Uh, from the truck this blue wire would be like your backup if you have backup lights on your trailer so what they did was they they cut the blue wire and then ran a wire to a to a, a, a backup alarm and then um, eh, yeah anyway it's just it's just a mess see and like this wire here they're using for a uh, um, to power the pass or the right hand brake light and so it comes down and goes underneath the frame gets back in with the wires and it's just just a mess 
and then uh, I'm not really sure what they were using this for but it was on there um, there was a wire for electric tarp which right now it's laying on the ground in there and then so this I'm not really sure it's just got one wire in it and uh, yeah I don't know on that one uh, then back here yeah back here is just a bigger mess so anyway and then the the wire that's supposed to be working the the brake light is this wire here and me and Wes found it the other day that it was it was broke right here um, so yeah I don't know it's like this green wire here it'll go so far and then it'll, it, it spliced and changed to a different color um, but that's the original wire right here anyway um, this wires cut they had that wire cut. I don't, I don't. We haven't figured out what it goes to yet. Anyway, so we've been dealing with this uh, mess, trying to get it all fixed up, and uh, you can kind of see it's just a mess, basically. And then the. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just gonna take some time. I've, we've ordered a few parts for it. It needs a, uh, they just call it a multi-function switch, which is your blinkers, your high beams, your windshield wipers, uh, all that. Um, that's one thing that's messing the brake light up on the right-hand side is if you have the truck, you know, basically if you have the turn, key turned on, right here in the turn signal, one, one little light is red. Uh, just one little bulb LED bulb and so I we we believe that we know the switch is broken but the turn signals do work high beams don't work and uh, we're thinking that it's messed up in there enough that it's getting a little bit of voltage to the turn signal which is then keeping the brake light off and that might have been like that before and so they're they went and did all this other stuff for basically no reason or maybe because that one, I forgot about that wire being broke. That might have been one they done it, but we've been working on that. The old Freightliner just needs uh, batteries. I was just using it to move the the tanker, the milk trailer, uh, to the front of the barn for the milk collar. But um, the last time I went to use it, uh, it wouldn't start, and it was dark. And so I had to use the newer Freightliner. I had to unhook the belly dump and all that good stuff. And... Uh, uh, Wes went and jumped it off the next day and we pulled it up here and uh, just need to find time to switch out the batteries. It's just got three batteries right here and then uh, not too big of a deal. Before we started messing with them wires, which we thought uh, all we had to do was get the brake light to work and we thought it was going to be no big deal, but we hooked up the old flatbed trailer. It's a 91 model. It's all steel. Uh, flatbed and uh, we hooked it up to the Kenworth and um, uh, you could wiggle the trailer wires and then you, you'd get juice and you wouldn't have juice and you know, obviously with all the bare wires showing and all that stuff so so the original trucks that we bought which was probably in I'm gonna say 98 was the old Freightliner it's a 94 model uh, so we bought it when it was four years old and um, um, we bought that truck and this trailer and they were in Bonham, Texas and uh, it was uh, me and my dad my grandfather went and, and looked at it and then me and my dad uh, or I rode with my dad I was, I was probably in the fourth or fifth grade and was I don't know 11 10 years old so we got that truck and got this trailer um, and the reason I'm talking about it is when I come back here is it got new wheels and tires put on it uh, either last year or the year before probably the year before and so now it's got new brake drums and new brakes but the thing is is back here um, in that old Freightliner we put a switch in it years ago to where I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can but this this rear axle hang on let me get over here where you can see this rear axle it's a 48 foot trailer 
which most trailers uh, that are 48 foot, like the, the aluminum one, the rear axle sits about here. And then you have a, a space to the rear of the trailer. But this axle sits all the way at the back, which makes it hard to turn sharp. And, uh, you know, if, if you're wanting to turn sharp, they're just really trying to fight each other, the two axles, and it's difficult. And then we also had a thing when we first got it where you just barely touch the brakes and you would lock them up. But anyway, what I'm saying is we put a switch in the old Freightliner and uh, when we would drive it, we'd flip it on and it would rear up the rear axle. And then uh, when we wanted to turn sharp, we would turn it off and dump it. And then we would be able to, to, to drive more on the front axle, which then would kind of swing the rear end around. But that's actually how you'd probably want it is uh, backwards, is be able to just flip the switch on and, and dump the rear axle and then just be able to drive with it off all the time because we have had trouble with people leaving the switch on and then you know the next day the truck's dead which is not that's not what's wrong with it right now it's actually needs new batteries but anyway um so what we're going to be working on here pretty quick because we're going to pull this with the kenworth is uh we're either going to hook there's four airlines up underneath there we're either going to hook them together or we're going to uh try to reverse it to where you know it'll air up all the time and uh it'll just stay aired up when it's hooked to the kenworth and then if we do put it back on the the old freight liner and say you know you're going to go somewhere where it's uh you know kind of a tight area we could be able to flip that switch when we need to because the old freight liner is a short nose and it's a shorter wheelbase and then if you can uh use that rear end like i was talking about it does come in handy, which, you know, maybe once in a lifetime type deal to get out of somewhere that you need to get out of. Um, anyway, so we got to work on that sometime before hay season starts. So the main reason for going out and buying this Kenworth was, number one, was we wanted a heavier truck. Uh, one that can uh, take the abuse of the back roads that we go down and, you know, going across pastures and all that kind of stuff. It's a heavier truck, and uh, the other thing is, is we wanted a, a truck that would be able to haul feed. So right now we're looking for a belt trailer, and then that way we can uh, haul our own feed. A lot of our feed comes out of Paris, uh, especially the corn, and then um, um, which is like a two-hour drive, so one way. And then uh, so I got it figured up that if we can if we can haul all our own feed and. Uh, I mean, we already do go pick up our fertilize and, and haul our own rock and, and lime and things like that. But if we can haul our, our own feed also, that would be uh, about a $70,000 savings over a year. So that's the plan. And that's what we're going to be working towards. And then not only the possibilities of, uh, you know, being able to haul silage and, and, then us, and then being able to maybe haul manure one day with it if we get a tanker. And... Um, yeah, those are the main goals with it. Anyway, um, enough of that crap. Let's go do something. Oh, I got some calves that ran through a post, ran through a fence in Brookwood Post, which we're about to go dig a pole hole, and then I'll show you that guy that, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Real quick, while I'm here, uh, the fertilized truck. So the fertilized truck's gonna have to make at least one more run. Uh, we, I've talked about it over the last year. Of doing these YouTube videos, the frame has been eaten up by fertilize, and uh, you can see there how uh, crooked that frame is, and how rusted it is. Uh, we used to take this, or actually, we still do. You know, we used to take it after being used and power wash it and clean it all up, and. Uh, we would actually like soak it down with some diesel or, or oil or something just to try to help prevent the rust and uh, you know that only that still only lasts so long before the fertilizer eats it up but the bed's still good the truck is still good it's just the frame of the truck you can see here I mean it's just I could probably rip it off if I wanted to with my hand and it's just the back foot or two of the truck 
frame. I mean, the rest of it's rusted, but it's okay. It's just from from about here on, and then it's kind of tweaking up this hanger for the leaf springs. And then uh, it's just a piece of wood that was underneath the bed. Between the bed and the frame has slid out because of the slop of the frame moving. Anyway, and then uh, if you remember the last time I was putting out fertilize, the uh, the piece that broke off here, which it was just barely welded on uh, from the beginning. Anyway, so it ended up breaking, like the weld rusted. And so that broke off. The tray fell down, hit the paddles, broke off some of the paddles, and uh, we have all that fixed and put back together. Oh. The dish, I ain't seeing it now. From where, oh, there's one right there. So from these coming around and hitting the tray, and then uh, the um, the nuts were actually rusted off, but the bolts were stainless steel. I don't know why it didn't have stainless steel nuts, but anyway, it uh, it was actually kind of a good thing because when it hit, instead of just destroying it, it just pulled it off. But then it did put a slight bend in the dish here which I don't think is going to hurt anything, but um, anyway, my point is, is with this uh, cold front coming in, it's kind of held us off a little bit, but probably towards the end of this week, because I think we got, we got like three or four days of cold weather, and then we slowly start warming back up, and then so at the beginning of next week, maybe at the end of this week, we'll be putting out a second round of fertilizer on all the, on the, on the, winter pasture so yeah trucks ready to go just probably needs to be run over with a grease gun and uh you know oil and water and all that checked out airs air in the tires and then we'll pray that the bed doesn't fall off but it's got to make one more run even though i've said that the last two or three times that that would be its last run so before we get started on this on this wood post uh <laughs> I mentioned a while ago six pounds of dry matter of corn silage, so I thought I'd go over with what we're feeding right now. Uh, right now we are feeding the six pounds of dry matter of corn silage and about eight pounds of dry matter of baleage. And then uh, if you don't know what that means is uh, to get the six pounds of dry matter, the corn silage is that we're feeding right now is about 38% dry matter. And then so if you took about 16 pounds of it and dried it down, you'd have your six pounds of dry matter. So the cows are actually being fed what you would call as fed, 16 pounds of corn silage, and then about uh, eight pounds of dry matter of baleage. And it's it's a little drier, the baleage is. It's, uh, uh, I think it's around 20 pounds, basically about 20 pounds of baleage. Then they're, they're getting about 25 pounds of dry, uh, yeah, they're getting about 25 pounds of dry matter of, of grain, you know, from as fed, it's uh, 16 pounds of corn, six pounds of uh, corn gluten, four pounds of soy holes and two pounds of soybean meal and then a pound of mineral and two pounds of molasses plus the water um, and then on the grass right now you can see this field here we're gonna be grazing that in just a couple days and uh, I would walk over there but then I gotta jump over this and yeah. so it's uh, uh, that's actually it's the height of that field or the dry matter available per acre in that field is a little higher than I would want it. I'd actually want it to be a little less, uh, but we're just at that stage right now of almost able to graze 24 hours, and but not quite yet. Um, once this cold front passes and we get this fertilizer put out, I mean, we, we should be able to go 24 hours with all three groups. Right now, group three, right there, those cows. That's the young group and some fresh cows mixed in with them. Uh, they're going 24 hours. Group one, which is second and third lactation cows, they're they're 12 hours. And then group two, which is all the old cows, uh, that you know they're all high group basically, but um, they are uh, 12 hours also. And then so we're getting about a 70 pound average right now, milking twice a day, and um, we we should be getting a few more pounds of milk here when the weather gets a little better. And we were able to start grazing 24 hours, all three groups. Um, but basically, the cows, 
are grazing about 14 to 15 pounds of dry matter of grass and then the, the dry matter in that grass is 15 percent so basically means the cows are going and grazing 95 to 100 pounds of grass to get that 15 pounds of dry matter um, that's just how much juice and water is in that in that green winter pasture the the grass is maton rye that's what we planted and uh, I mean it's doing great it's had a perfect year for it. Uh, we were cold early, which really set the, or went ahead and put the nail in the coffin on the uh, on the Bermuda grass, the Tifton 85 and the uh, Coastal, and that was back early November. Actually, November 1st, we got our first frost. And so uh, that went ahead and, and, and put that in its dormancy. And then so they the ryegrass had nothing to compete with and it got to get really going good and then uh, we actually stayed a little dry and then just uh, just enough moisture at the right time to keep it going and uh, I would say right now we're probably a month ahead so usually late February is when we're going 24 hours um, in a typical year uh, usually late February we're we're talking about putting that second round of fertilize on but we've already been talking about it for a couple weeks now and um, like I said, group three has been grazing 24 hours for five or six days now. So, and I mean, it's with grass like that, you would say, let's go 24 hours, but it's a little bit of a, um, uh, it's kind of like a false look because it looks good. But if we were to start pushing all three groups, uh, we would probably pretty quickly run out of grass because you're talking about uh, we've we've been as far out as a 30-day round, and we've we've kind of narrowed it down to a 26-day round, which means that uh, the you know like this field here, we'd cut we'd put two reels up and cut that into three sections. So this first section, which would be about two acres, uh, when they got that, or when they graze that mm -hmm. section off, it would be 30 <laughs> days before they came back to it again, and then we've narrowed it down to 26 days now. Um, so theoretically, we would be grazing that field. Today's Tuesday. On Thursday morning, we'd be in here. So 26 days after that, if we stayed on the same round, we'd be back in there again. I'm really over explaining that, but uh, uh, we're just gonna slowly keep ticking down. And then when we graze all three groups, we'd be at about an 18 day round. So uh, can't jump the gun yet, but we're really close. So we'll get started on this wood post. Uh, we built this fence about three years ago. It's uh, the top wire, the middle wire, and the bottom wire are hot. The other two are grounded. Uh, this was the weaning pins. This was to teach calves, you know, not only to have six different pins for calves to move around, but it was also to uh, teach them how to use, you know, to respect electric fence. Anyway, this group got moved over to here. Uh, some of them just came out of the the weaning pen down there or what we call all these the weaning pens But the first one is made out of panels and that's where they go when they come out of the calf hutches and so when they uh, came out of there That first night sometime in the middle of the night They all ran and hit the fence so hard that they just snapped the wood post off right at the ground the, It's got concrete around the wood post um, But they just snapped it right off uh, Like I said, it's only been there for three years. So it wasn't rotted. They just I guess hit it that hard I mean, they're all fine. They're all okay. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, you can see them. I mean, they look fine. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to dig a hole next to that hole or next to the old post because I don't want to dig the concrete up and then reset another post and, and do it that way. give that a day or two to set up and then uh, come out here all I gotta do is 
the old post is just sitting there and just kind of slide the wires off of it, hang it on it, and then tighten everything back up and put the insulators on and it's done. So, well, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. Just got random things to do for the rest of the day. I rambled on on a lot of this one. It's just uh, kind of hard to lay things out for uh, videoing purposes right now because getting pulled in many different directions trying to make sure everything gets done and, and all that good stuff. But, uh, um, you know, with uh, being shorthanded three guys, it's just the way it is. It happens. Uh, we'll probably be stuck like this for a few weeks and then some guys will show up and we'll be good for a little while and then it'll happen again. Uh, with that, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And, and hopefully here pretty soon we can get back to the normal. But uh, until then, we'll see you. Thanks for watching.